video of our Mesh Tastic for Makers course, we're going to be connecting our mesh of sensors and whatnot, all of our nodes, to other things via MQTT. We're going to be continuing with the node we set up in the previous few videos, and you can find all of those videos in the playlist below or in the written course also linked below. First things first, let's clarify something. When someone in the more regular Mesh Tastic community mentions MQTT, they are often talking about network tunneling meshes together. This is where you have a mesh in one place and you use an MQTT server and the internet to connect it to a mesh in another place. There's actually a public MQTT server for mesh tastic devices. We are not doing that, we're doing something else. Instead, we'll be connecting our mesh of sensors to an MQTT broker. This is going to create a connection point from our mesh and nodes to whatever else we really want. If you connected it to something like Adafruit IO, you'll be able to monitor your sensor data over the internet anywhere in the world. If you send it to your home assistant server, you can start integrating your Mesh-tastic connected devices into your home automation setup. Whatever you want to do, if it has MQTT compatibility, you will be able to connect your Mesh-tastic nodes to it. For this video, we're gonna go through the example of sending and receiving data with Adafruit IO, but the method we use here can be used for other MQTT things, whatever you need. Now, the regular internet tunneling usage method of this uses the MQTT module in the Mesh-tastic client, which is actually extremely easy to use, but unfortunately, in our case, it's not going to work. As you might have guessed, we are gonna be using the second microcontroller to do this instead. Very importantly, you will need, of course, to use a microcontroller that supports Wi-Fi connectivity. For our code along, we're gonna be using the PicoW and MicroPython, but if you wanna use another microcontroller and language, it's definitely possible as well. Alrighty, before we begin, we're going to need to install an MQTT library for our Pico, and we can do that by searching micropython-umqtt.simple, make sure you have the same library, and now we are ready to go. Alright, we are going to paste in the sample code, which of course you can find on the course site linked below, and let's just quickly go through it and see what it's doing. Starting off, we import all the libraries we need, then we go through and just set up some information that will be helpful later. Most importantly, we have our Wi-Fi name and password, as well as our MQTT details. I'm just using Adafruit.io, punch in your username and password, and then you need to create a client ID for this device. And this needs to be a unique name across the entire network, so pick something that somebody else probably isn't using. Just gonna go ahead and call mine Jared a uh, Meshtastic device one. Hopefully nobody steals that. And I'll type in my key later because it's probably something you shouldn't share with the internet. On Adafruit IO, I've also gone ahead and created a few feeds. We've got temp one, soil one, and light here. And in my code, I've just gone ahead and created that feed name and assigned it to a variable as well. Adafruit IO is pretty intuitive to use, but if you do need a hand with it, we'll have a guide link below. And that guide is actually what most of this video is based upon. Then we go ahead and set up a UART exactly as we did last time, and we're also just going to set up an LED, which is going to help us with some debugging. Then we get to the first of many functions we'll be using. This one is simply one that connects your Pico to your local Wi-Fi network using the details we used before, and just to help when it's deployed in the field, it's going to flash that LED while it's connecting, and once it's connected, it'll be a solid green. Then we've got our process UART message, which has been in every code we've used before. This is just simply going to take the message and extract out the actual text we want. Nothing really different here. And then we have this MQT subscription callback. And what this is going to do is whenever our Pico receives a message from our MQTT broker and something that it's subscribed to, it's going to do whatever we have in this function here. And just to start off with, we're going to send the message via UART. So when we receive a message from our MQTT broker, we're just going to broadcast it to the message tastic network using that UART write that we've been using before. Now here is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're defining an asyncio function. If you haven't used asyncio before, it's essentially a method of getting two separate bits of code to run at the same time. Here's our first asyncio function and there's our second one. We'll We'll just come back to them in a little bit, and then we actually start running our code. So we'll run the connect Wi-Fi function to connect your Pico to the internet, and then we'll go ahead and set up all of our MQTT information with everything we specified at the top. Then we'll go ahead and set up that callback function as the callback function, and that just means this is the function that we're gonna use whenever we receive a message. And then we're gonna connect to our MQTT broker and subscribe to the MQTT receive topic, which is light. And then we simply use asyncio to run handle UART and handle MQTT at the same time. It's a very cool way of kind of running two things at once. So inside handle UART, we have a while true loop, and this is going to be pretty similar to what we've done before. We're going to check, is there a UART message available? And then we'll go through and sort it out and get it into that nice format we've been dealing with. And then we're simply going to check, 
if the message starts with soil one, we're going to do something. And this is exactly like we've been doing before, controlling motors, sending it to the display. But instead, we're going to publish it to our MQTT client. And we're gonna send this to our soil topic, which at the top here, we defined as soil one. And if we head over to our Adafruit dashboard, you can see we've got our soil one topic set up. And we've also got temp one set up. And these are just the topics we arbitrarily created in Adafruit IO to send data to. After that, we simply go through and check, does it start with temp? And if it does, we'll send it to the temperature topic that we set up. Exactly the same thing. And if you wanna have more things to be checking for, you can just copy and paste this entire thing again, like so. And instead you might be looking for uh, humidity one or some other message, whatever you want. We've got examples of this from before. And if we run that code, we should see that it connects to the Wi-Fi and it should connect to our broker real soon. Chug along. And if I go ahead and send a random message, you should see that it ignores it exactly like we did before. But if I send a soil one colon and then a number behind it, like so, it should publish it to our MQTT broker. And if I send through another simulated reading, like so, we can see, ooh, might take a second, that it updates on our dashboard. And now we can see our mesh and our data from some remote node that might not have internet connection coming through to our Wi-Fi connected node through MQTT to a dashboard or wherever we want to see it online. The second loop that we have running at the same time is this handle MQTT function. And while true, we're gonna try and simply check for messages coming from our broker. And the rest of this is just error handling. But long story short, it just checks if a message has come through. And if it has come through, we're gonna call this callback function and just write that message to you are. And then because our other Pico is set up to repeat whatever it hears to the Meshtastic network, it'll go from our broker to the second Pico, then to the Meshtastic Pico to the Meshtastic network. And then in our Adafruit IO dashboard, I've just gone ahead and created a button just to test to see what's going on. And if we go into settings, we can see how we've configured this. Edit block. Oh, next. You can see that when the button is on, it's gonna send light on, and when it's off, it's gonna send light off, exactly in that same format that we've been doing so far, and you should change it to match whatever format you're using. So if we update that, and we save that layout, if I turn this on, we should see a message coming through that the light has been turned on. Like so, beautiful. And if we flick it off, we can see light on. So that message has gone from our MQTT broker over Wi-Fi to our Pico, then broadcasted to the Meshtastic network, and I'm receiving it on our other test Meshtastic device, and we can see the message coming through here. And if we had a node set up to look for, if it starts with light and then followed by on, turn the light on, and if it's off, turn it off, we can now remotely control something through the internet, even if it's off the grid. It does just one part of our system needs to be connected to the net. Well, that about wraps us up for now. If you made anything cool with it or you need a hand with anything we covered in this video, head on over to our community forums. Until next time though, happy making.